Good morning and welcome to our Daily Word and Prayer. My name is Tom Short. So glad to have you along with us today. And I'm also glad to have along a special guest with me, Keith Darrell, a good friend of mine, who also speaks on campuses around the country. And I'm glad to have him because he's been with me this week. We've had a good time preaching and we're rained out a little bit. But also, I've come down with a cold and I know I'm going to start coughing any second now. So I'm glad to have him along and that he can fill in with me today. It's cold. Yes, and so we're, I'm, I'm not going to stand too close to him either. Keith begins each day reading from this scripture. I'd like to read it and then ask him why he chooses this scripture. Let's look at it from Psalm 24. It says this, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your gates, lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Well, Keith, as I was saying, that's kind of a strange verse to start campus preaching. You normally think John 3.16 or Romans 3.23 or one, something like this. And um, the, the Lord gave you this a couple years ago. Go ahead and give us, tell us a little bit why. I'm going to step out of the picture and, um, and, and hope I don't cough too much here. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so a few years ago, um, you, know, you usually seek the Lord, like, what should I preach? And what are the things we should emphasize? And I think it was, uh, it's actually been a number of years now, six, seven years ago, where I um, was just seeking the Lord was over Christmas break, and I just kind of believe the Lord said, preach from Psalm chapter 24. And so I uh, returned to campus preaching in the spring, and I begin to, you know, open up my Bible, read Psalm chapter 24, and for a semester, it just seemed, that, you know, I'd look up and there'd be 70 people there. And at that point, I did not have um, Psalm 24 memorized, but you read it every day for three weeks. At the end of three weeks, is like, okay, I, I know exactly what this text says. And so then you're able to kind of read a little bit more freely, look up at the audience, look at people, see what their responses are. But the reason I started preaching from this text is uh, it begins, it kind of covers everything in redemption. So the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and those who dwell therein. And one of the primary things I like to emphasize while I'm evangelizing is actually creation. Not simply from a creation versus evolution standpoint, but who made the world? What, what, are, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a woman? Why did God make us? What does it mean to be fruitful and multiply? And all these sorts of issues that we are dealing with as a culture, sex, uh, abortion, um, transgenderism, all these issues kind of flow down from creation. So if you consider the past 150 years, beginning with Chuck Darwin, maybe even a little bit before that, there is an aspect where, um, yeah, Western culture started to get deconstructed, and the foundation that was kind of ripped out from underneath us was beginning with the creator. There was no longer a creator, and the world kind of got guided by blind and personal forces, and so whatever we make of ourselves is kind of where we're at as a culture. You get a, you know, now determine your own sex, determine whatever it is that you are. And so the reason I started beginning with this verse and the way I started emphasizing it was just being able to say that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and those who dwell therein, and the emphasis there being on each and every one of us owes our allegiance to God. Um, here, you know, especially on university campuses, men and women will pledge their allegiance to feminism, uh, LGBTQ, capitalism, communism, socialism, all these isms are these ideologies that people put forward. Um, but very rarely is it just, well, the earth is the Lord. So we don't get to do whatever we want uh, on the earth. Just as one of the common illustrations I'll use on a college campus is the students live in an apartment or they live in a building that is owned by somebody else. And so are they allowed to do whatever they want with that building? And the answer is no, they're not. And so since the answer is no, they're not. And so if the earth is the Lord's, are we allowed to do whatever we want on his land, on his earth, on his property? And the answer is no, but the Lord is allowed to do whatever he wants on his land, on his earth, and on his property. And so just beginning there with the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein, then I get to tease out the implications of that. And I'll say something to the effect of whether you're white, 
whether you're black, whether you're male, female, straight, gay, confused, the earth is Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and those who dwell therein. So the emphasis there is on the reality that you and I owe our allegiance to God in everything that we're doing. And so all the little uh, relative contingencies, and that's interesting enough, our culture is radically relative. So why, if you're a woman, do you owe your allegiance to feminism? Or why, if you're white or black, uh, more so maybe the blacks are allowed to do it, like you can have a little more of allegiance to your race. Um, wh what is it that we, you and I should pledge our allegiance to? And at the end of the day, all of our national allegiances, all of our gender allegiances, all of our sexual allegiances, even familial uh, allegiances are relative compared to our allegiance to the Lord. So the earth is the Lord's, the fullness of the, of the world, and those who dwell therein. So we owe our allegiance to God. And then Jesus comes along. He says, uh, you know, unless you hate your father, mother, sister, brother, I tell you the truth, you cannot be my disciple unless you hate your own life. And so those things are kind of intertwined. But then the other aspect, once you kind of lay out the basic aspects of creation, what does it mean to be a creature, how do we owe our allegiance to God, is we get to get into the aspect of who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place. It's only he that has clean hands and a pure heart. And so then you get to ask the question, well, who here, who here would say that their hands are clean or that their heart is pure? And the reality of it is no one's hands are. And even the atheists and the agnostics, everybody knows that. Um, n nobody on campus when I'm preaching will argue for their own perfection. Uh, everybody will say, we're sinners, we're sinners. And so everybody acknowledges that they're sinners. Uh, but then the question is, if you really are a sinner and if you are not perfect, then how is it that you get to ascend the hill of the Lord? How is it that you get to stand in his holy place? So if God is life and you're bringing death into his presence, uh, he'll, he'll expel it out. And that's kind of what happens in the garden. Adam and Eve rebel against God. He expels them out of the garden. When Israel becomes idolatrous, they get exiled. And so similarly, hell is basically eternal exile uh, from God. So who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? And the answer is, he that has clean hands and a pure heart is not what the soul to what is false. And then you just get to ask the question of, who here has clean hands? Who here has pure hearts? And the answer is, nobody. And so you kind of, you get to, everybody owes their allegiance to God. Uh, no one is clean. No one is pure. And then um, we go on to say, you know, kind of race through the part of, he will see the blessing of the Lord. But then we get to the aspect of, lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. And uh, I believe ultimately that is found in, and fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. So he's the one who goes to the cross. He ascends into heaven, and he takes a seat at the right hand of God the Father. And so when he ascended into heaven, I believe the gates were opened up, and they began to ask this question. I believe all of heaven began to ask this question. Uh, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. If you're familiar with Revelation chapter 5, I think this is a beautiful picture of Jesus entering into the courts where he says this, um, Then I saw in the right hand of him who is seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seal? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look into it. And one of the elders said, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and the seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures, among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns, with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. And he sent out to all the earth. And so here you have this lamb that was slain, that was Jesus, but he is worthy to open the scroll. So he's the one who's able to descend the hill of the Lord. And now all of us who are in him are able to ascend the hill of the Lord and stand in God's holy place, not because of human merit, not because of human effort, uh, but because the Lamb of God was slain and he was able to take the scroll, open it, and now all of us get to worship and serve the living God. So that's kind of the basic idea of why I'm building out of Psalm 24, because I get to, I get to start with creation, get to come into human sinfulness, and then I get to apply it with the person and work of Jesus Christ. So, Amen. Amen. Isn't that awesome? I'll tell you, I am encouraged to have younger men, Keith is actually younger than me, <laughs> that, um, that are carrying the torch onto our college campus. Let me just close in prayer if I could. Father in heaven, we bless you with all of our heart. We thank you for sending our Lord Jesus Christ to be that Savior. And we confess that the earth is yours and, and our allegiance, Father, those of us here this morning, and all of us every day, every person on earth, our allegiance belongs to you more than to anything else. And I pray, Father, raise us up as people who are devoted to you above, yes, above our race, our gender, our nationality, our, our uh, <clears throat> Lord, our, our background, even our family, and even our own life. 
that we love you and we're your disciples. We bless you. We thank you. You're a great God. We worship you. I do pray for Keith here. I pray, Lord, that you'd bless his ministry mightily. I pray in the years he has on the campus, the seed he's sown, the souls he's seen saved in the past, and those who will be saved in the future, and the word that's going out powerfully and mightily, that you would cause many people to hear him increase his influence greatly, I ask, and might he be a voice for Jesus Christ on our camp- nation's campuses. We pray this and bless you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Thanks for being with me, Keith. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being with us. If you're new today, a special welcome to you. We come here every day to get in the Word of God, and and I hope you will join us. 8.30 a.m. live Eastern Time, or you can watch later in the day, or you can watch, or you can even listen to the Apple, Spotify, or Google platform, the podcast on those platforms. I've kind of been struggling with a cold I came down with, and so pray for me. I hope I get better because I'm supposed to be in Iowa next week and we'll be preaching at Iowa State University is the plan. So I hope we get better real quick and uh, ready for the trip this weekend. God bless you. I love you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.